Airtable automations let you get more out of your data, turning tables and spreadsheets into launch pads for automated workflows. A recent update to Airtable's automations introduced a simple but extremely useful feature. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the repeating groups function in Airtable automations. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we help people to create time with workflow automations built in Airtable and other low-code tools. If you'd like to see more tips and tutorials every single week about apps like Airtable, Zapier, Make, and more, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Today, I'm going to explain how the repeating groups function works and give you a couple of detailed examples so you can follow along and see it in action. Let's get to it. First, I'll give you a quick overview of how it works. Then I'll walk you through the process in more detail. To begin, create an Airtable automation. You can use any trigger you'd like. Next, your automation will need to retrieve a piece of data that it can use as a list. This can be a set of records, a multi-select field, or a linked record field. If your trigger doesn't retrieve a list in one of these formats, you'll need to add an action or search step that does. With your list in place, choose Repeating Group under Advanced Logic. Connect it to the list you want to use. And finally, add the actions you want the automation to repeat for every item in the list. Whether your list has 1, 50, or even 1,000 items, the actions you add to a repeating group will repeat for every single one of them. This is a great way to build flexible automations that can accommodate for a variable number of items. Just note you can't add any individual actions after a repeating group. Any action that you want the automation to perform once needs to go before the repeating group. You also can't include a conditional logic module in the same Airtable automation as a repeating group module. This will hopefully change in the future as Airtable continues to build out and update their automations, but you should be aware of the limitation for now. Now let's dive deeper into repeating groups with a detailed walkthrough and an example automation. For our example, we're going to build an automation to alert users whenever they've been assigned a new task from our task management system. In this team tasks table, users are assigned to tasks with a linked record, and more than one person can be assigned to the same task. The automation will run whenever a new task is submitted through this form view, and using the repeating groups feature, will send a separate Slack alert to each person on the task. To get started, we'll create a new automation. Then we'll choose when a form is submitted. We'll select team tasks as the table we want the automation to watch, and task creator as the form. We'll test the step to make sure the automation can retrieve a record. We'll make sure to choose a task that's assigned to multiple people. Now that isn't strictly necessary when you're setting up an automation with a repeating group function, but it's helpful. As long as your data is capable of holding multiple records, like a multi-select field or a linked record field, the automation will still run correctly even if the list only has one item. If you're familiar with programming, the list that we're referring to here in a repeating group is any data formatted as an array. Even if the array only has one item, the repeating group function can still process it as an array. However, by testing the automation with a list of two or more items, it will be easier to confirm that it's working exactly as intended. Since the assignee linked record field on each new task is what we're going to use as a list, I'll make sure we're using a record that has at least two assignees. The trigger test was successful, and our automation retrieved a record with a field that we can use as a list. Now let's add the repeating group function itself. Click on Add Advanced Logic or Action, select Repeating Group under the Advanced Logic section at the top of the list. Next, we'll need to choose the list that the automation should use. Click on the Select Input List button, a Use Data From window will pop up, letting you select a list from data retrieved earlier in the automation. Since the only earlier step in this automation is the trigger, that's the only step that we'll see here on the left. On the right, we see the fields retrieved in that step. Most of them are grayed out and can't be selected since these field types can't contain lists. Our only options are Department, which is a multi-select field, and assignee, which is a linked record field. We'll select assignee. Now we'll click on test input list. 
The test successfully retrieved a list and now we see two items enumerated in the list. When you click on any of the numbered items, you can see more detail about it. In this case, since we're using a linked record field, we can see the record ID and the record's name. Our test looks good, so we can add an action to our repeating group. You can add any action that you'd like to a repeating group. Just remember that it will run for every item in the list. We want to send a Slack alert to each assignee, so we'll scroll down to Slack and choose Send Message. Now, we can configure this action like any other automated action in Airtable. We'll choose our Slack account and compose a message using a mix of static and dynamic data from earlier in the automation. Hello, you've just been assigned a new task. We'll insert the data from the trigger to include the task title and a link where the user can view the task directly. We'll also insert data from the current item in the repeating group to add the user's name. Then we'll finish configuring this step by adding a name and icon for the bot. Now we can generate a preview to see what the message will look like. The preview looks pretty good, but it only shows the message configured for the first item in the list. Unfortunately, you also can't use the test automation function for any automations that include a repeating group. Instead, we'll have to run a quick live test. We'll turn on the automation, then add a new task with the task creator form. After we click submit, we can see two messages in the tutorials channel. Each one is addressed to a different user. Of course, if this were a real automation, we would want to send a DM to each user individually. But by just including the names, we can confirm that the repeating group processed each item individually. That covers everything you need to know about using repeating groups with linked records or multi-select fields. Let's wrap up this tutorial with a quick look at using a list of records from a search instead. Since we already covered the nuts and bolts of building an automation with a repeating group, we won't repeat all that detail again. Instead, let's just look at how you can add a search step to your automation to find records and use the search results as a list. From there, the automation will work exactly the same way. Expanding on our task alert example, Let's say we want to send a message to the whole team every Monday at 9.15 a.m. alerting them of all the tasks that are marked as incomplete and urgent. We've already set up this trigger for an automation that will run every Monday at 9.15. Now, we'll add a find record step and search for any tasks that are marked as urgent and not marked as done. We'll test the action, and we see a list of a few records. Now we'll add a repeating group action, and we can see an option to use this list of records as our list. We'll create a similar Slack message and finish building the automation. Once again, we'll need to run a live test to confirm that everything worked. In this case, since the automation is a scheduled automation, we'll just change the time to be a couple of minutes from now. And right on time, we got a Slack message for every incomplete and urgent task. Even in the world of no code, iterating is an essential function for ensuring that our automations are flexible enough to handle variable data. After all, automations that can't respond to real world circumstances simply won't be very useful for anyone. Repeating groups are an easy way to set that up. It will make your Airtable automations much more effective, so try them out today. You can also check out the other tutorials on Airtable on our channel to see what else you can build with no code.
If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human. Like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, don't forget, keep the flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.